Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Uh, let's go straight to the point. We have been studying the topic that talked about death. Death is something that is universally common. In fact, there are people that they call death to one point of view. Somebody say hallelujah. If anyone is calling you only with the front, so after this teaching, the Almighty God will free you in Jesus. Amen. Amen. You shall not be called only with the again. Amen. Amen. So that is something that is not good. And that is why we want to, you know, to if necessary to avoid it. And if we have to borrow, we will borrow with what we can pay. So the test is a blessing and it's a prayer that pray upon the children of Israel. And you become an Israeli by adoption through Christ Jesus. Hence you give your life to Christ. You are now one of the members of the family of God's children. You have been taken from darkness to light. So the Bible says it gave them power to become the sons and daughter of God. John chapter 1, verse 12. Now, in Deuteronomy 28, and I pray that, that this will be your Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Verse 12, our text says, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. Amen. Amen. The heaven to give thee rain Amen. unto the land Amen. in the season, Amen. and to bless all the work of the hand. Amen. And thou shalt learn unto many nations. Amen. Amen. And thou shalt not fall. Amen. I pray that for you in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. The Lord will bless you until you are debt free. Amen. Amen. And you shall never borrow. Amen. For you will be a lender. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, so debt is defined as something that is owned or due. Typically, money. Debt is the state of owing money. When you owe somebody money, then you are a debtor. But it go more than that. You can hold people that they, you know, uh, thanks, appreciation. You can hold people gratitude. Like we owe God gratitude. We cannot thank God enough for what He has done for us. Somebody said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're supposed to be thanking God every day for the grace that He has given unto us. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, we cannot even thank him for enough for giving us the grace to become born again. Because a lot of people want to become born again, but they cannot. So it's a grace on his own. And we have to thank God for that. And all the blessings flow from God. What did I just say? All the blessings flow from God. Every blessing flow from God. I pray that that blessing will flow into you and we will farewell and foreshadow you in Jesus. Amen. So we have done for heart of seven principles that I want to pass across in this teaching of death. And uh, this principle will give us the knowledge not to you know, enter into unnecessary debt that can bring financial problems into our lives. There are, there are, there are debts that can bring financial problems into somebody's life. When you borrow something that is going to be a problem to you, in other words, when you want to borrow we are talking about that in the introduction and at the first point, somebody said hallelujah. hallelujah. That we have to be careful. Don't borrow what you are not able to work, to pay. So don't, don't stress yourself on that necessary. Because God does not make it like that. Somebody said hallelujah. hallelujah. The first thing we talk about, the principle can remind me. Understand. Uh -huh. Understanding your own principle. We talk about that. No, somebody, no. Understanding your time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. What is that? What is number one? Understanding your own yeah. The first principle is to understand our own time because our time is different. You will enter into error. You will borrow what you are not able to pay. This is what drives a lot of people into trouble. When they look at other people and then they want to behave like that or act like that. Your own time is coming. And when your own time comes, that is the best time for you. And God knows why. God knows why it delay 
for you to wait for your own time so that you can enjoy it very well. Our principal usually say when we were in secondary school, he say only penny koba le ni pe te te ni koba man ni ma. In other words, everything have its own time. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, because you don't have money today, does not mean that you cannot become a multi-millionaire tomorrow. But when you have this this assurance that you know your own timing, your own timing is your time, then you'll be able to wait for your own timing. Number two, that you have to understand. What did I say? Understanding what you live for. Correct. As a child of God, this is the good thing about it, as a child of God, the word of God mold our life. That is the great opportunity that we have. It mold our life to the extent that we know that our life is not going to be like the unbeliever. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, you don't know the scripture said that some people that wonder why does God bless the uh, the ungodly. Hallelujah. Amen. God said their own blessing is for them to work to to perish. Amen. On you, your own blessing is to take you to heaven. So when the unbeliever is rich, when the unbeliever is enjoying life, that you think that they enjoy life. Hallelujah. Amen. So believer supposed to know that wow how to understand what I am living, living for. So what they, become, what they are enjoying cannot do the same thing like Daniel. Daniel said, I will not defend my, my body with the portions of the king's meat because he knew what, what, you know, what, what he works. He knew what he stands for. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we understand, you know, what we live for will help us. No, after he had interpreted the dream and the king promoted him, do you know that he just gave all the blessing to his friends? Mm. And he sat down at the gate because it's not money or riches or position, it doesn't move him. But he followed God and his work. When they had them not to pray, he actually opened the window of his uh, house down for them to know that he is praying. Mm. No, because he knew his life. So when we know our value, the blessing will come because God is the one that that alone is the one that dictates, is the one that actually share that blessing. All blessings come from God. And the Almighty God will make that blessing come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, what we talk about is what? Trust, trust in the Lord. Lord. We have to true put our trust in the Lord. Why? Because God is God. And God can bring things out of nothing. God can bless. The Bible, the Bible makes us to know that the word of God is your yes and amen. And God is always at the back of those people that trust in him. If you put your trust in him, they will never put you to shame. Yeah. There are a lot of bills that God can pay for you. There is a lot of debt that God can pay. He can weather it for you. There are a lot of uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, there is all, there is a lot of resources. If you put your trust in God, that God can make you to know and understand in order for you not to even borrow. Somebody say hallelujah. Number four. What do we talk? We talked about that last week. Trust God. Correct. The word of God, the Bible says, you know, no, it's word more than work. It's name. If anyone trusts the word of God, the world will begin to work for him. Hallelujah. We you know that we go to that detail today. Somebody say hallelujah. Because if there is anything that I want you to know about this death uh, teaching is to make sure that you make the word of God your friend. Because everything you need, what did I say? Everything. Is in the world. What somebody is everything that I need? Everything that I need. It's in the world. Yes, it's in the world. You just need to know that word and to be able to trust that word and to be able to practice, to put that word into practice in your life. And you will find out that it will be easy for you to get out from there. So today we shall continue the principle that you need to know for you not to enter into unnecessary debt and bring financial problem into your life. Number five. Number five is that memorize the word of God and apply it into your situation. Memorize. What did I say? Memorize. In other words, you have to study to make yourself approved unto God, like a worshiper who needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of the truth. If you don't know the word, you will go against what the word of God has said. If you don't read it, 
Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Before, uh, uh, you know, I, I understood for me not to borrow, hallelujah, from a brother. It was the word of God that I read that I encountered. I said, wow. And from that day, I never asked anybody as a brother or as my sibling to borrow me money. I never. Before, I can't. I will say, borrow me. Hallelujah. But from that day, I said, no. Because of the word of God. And from that time, God has never put me to shame. Hallelujah. So if I am to borrow for business, I have to go to the bank. Hallelujah. And borrow so that I don't put costs upon my sibling, upon my brother, who want to borrow for interest, for usury. Somebody said, hallelujah. Because... I want to do what I want to. I want to do what the Bible asks me to do because I encountered the word when I was reading it. So you have to know the word of God. You have to memorize the word of God and apply it in your life. No, know it for ignorance. It's not going to help you like you apply what the word says. That is when you will be reading the place. I pray the Almighty God will open your understanding in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. As believer, when you find you are struggling with your finances. Instead of you to begin to borrow, turn to God. Words. What did I say? Turn to God. Yeah. To find the truth. There are truths that apply to your situation. Somebody that hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are truths that apply to the word of God. You know, uh, Elijah told that woman, somebody that hallelujah. hallelujah. I bet, do you have uh, water? Do you want to go and get water? Is that bed? Make uh, some uh, some cake for me, make some bread for me. And, uh, your boss sees, man of God. Hey, Allah is again. Eh? The only food that I left in the house is for me to eat and my kid and to walk. Yeah. And to be expecting our walk. Our walk. Our walk. Our walk. Our walk. Hallelujah. Amen. But the man of God said, don't worry. Just go and make for me first. That's your flower. It shall never work. It will not, you know, you not finish. Oh, and the oil will never dry. Hallelujah. So she believed the word of God. And that front a miracle. So if you believe the word of God, if you read it and memorize it and believe and act it, if you act it, that is the word, you will get the result. The reward of God is in his word. In as much as you know the word and you practice the word, the word will do its work. Meaning that it's going to bring it to pass. I want to emphasize on this because it's very, very important. Because if you actually read it like in one, one part, but to apply it, that is why a lot of people fail. And then they say the word of God, it doesn't work. No, the word of God will work. It's because you have not practiced it. That is why. And you have to do it. Somebody said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anyone those in here? Somebody said hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, this is not the time to to imagine you to read him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to know that the word of God is very, 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 very powerful. Because the Bible said it. The Bible said it's sharper than two eggs sword. So that word will bring something for you. And you have to study it. Because that is where the truth is. That situation that you see, hallelujah, Amen. that is not the reality of things. If you apply the word of God, the word of God knows how to settle and to take care of everything. In everything, apply the word of God. Especially if you want to blossom financially. Hallelujah. Amen. So, uh, so, then, strength it's in the word of God and hope for your future. There is strength in the word of God. There is hope for your future. Not only the present situation, but in the future. The word of God will begin to work for you when you start to apply it into your life. It doesn't work before you apply it to your life, but it works after you begin to apply it into your life. Now, if you find yourself struggling in life, Especially your finances. I want you to pause and say, where am I missing it in the word of God? What did I just say? Where am I missing it in the word of God? Yeah, if you find yourself struggling with your finances, to help you to balance, then 
Look at it. Look at the word of God. Where am I missing in the word of God? King Lo Yaki is to me. Tishi, according to the word of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And that is where the Almighty God will open your understanding and you'll be able to know where you are missing it. Because the word of God will reveal to you because the word of God is a mirror. It's a mirror that lets you know where you are standing and what you, what, where you need to stand. So, head knowledge will not do. But in putting the word of God into practice in your life, there is great reward. And that reward is awaiting you. It's awaiting me. It's awaiting anyone that will put the word of God that you know into practice. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, hand over your worry and find rest in God and his word by doing what the scripture asks you to do. Now there is no shortcoming. There is no uh, shortcut. There is no you know, easy route. There is no easy way than for you to obey. Because in obey, that is where you will actually be happy. Those people that obey before, they are a happy person. Somebody says hallelujah. Uh, you know, I will not be able to explain a lot of things to you and give some instances of you know, you know, of some fact about people being rebellious and have nothing to show for it. Somebody said hallelujah. hallelujah. You cannot be rebellious against the word of God, especially in handling in, in, in disobeying the word of God for your finances. And expect to be blossomed financially. It's you're gonna be struggle. You're gonna be struggling. And I pray the Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. Yeah. So memorize the word of God and apply it into your situation. You will see that your attitude to borrow will dramatically reduce and you will soon be well, be debt free. Now, brother, uh, my brother and my sister, what make you hope? What close what closer do? Why do you hope? Why do you hope? Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody? Ah, no, 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 no. Uh, we have not, I have not, <laughs> I said that uh, last week, somebody said that earlier. Yeah. Don't let me go that area. It was part of it. That, I mean, uh, uh, I'm saying, why did they, why are you a debtor? Hallelujah. Because you need to meet some bills. Thank you, because, uh, because you borrow. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why you owe somebody, right? Yes. You owe somebody money because you have the money to work to borrow you. That is borrowing. Bills and obligation is different. Maybe you pay your rent or pay your car note or pay your insurance or pay your tax or pay your 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 bills or, or pay your tithe. Somebody said hallelujah. Amen. So those are obligations. Now, but when now you borrow money, the person that you borrow money is looking at you to get his money back. Now if you borrow from the bank, the bank will put interest on their money. So they want you to pay the capital and then they also want to pay the interest. And what did they do? They will first ask you to be paying the interest. Yeah, yeah the interest is what you're going to be paying. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is what a lot of people do. Those people that have millions, they just put it in the bank and the money will be working for them. You will get there in the name of that. Yeah. Just put your millions in the bank and let it be working for you. You just be going and doing that. You will get there. Yeah. I want to tell you it is only one when you get one million dollars because after one million dollars you just you find oh I just have a million million will not be any uh, straight to you anymore. Amen. Somebody said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that the Almighty God will make you to blow some financially in that Amen. Amen. But the word of God as a child of God is a sure route for you to go to be financially stable and blow some. And you will not be able even to be borrowing and uh, you know something that you will not be able to pay. So hand over your worry, somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. and find rest in the word of God and his word by doing what the scripture asks you to do. Memorize the word of God and apply it into your situation. You will see that your attitude to borrow will dramatically reduce and you will soon be debt free. There are scriptures to help you when you feel that anxiety or worry and fear to borrow overwhelming your heart. And that's 
where I want you to be extremely careful. Hallelujah. Amen. And study it. I put some scripture. There are a lot of them, but I put some scripture there to help you. Okay? Repeating this scripture until it becomes part of you and leave it daily. What did I say you should do? Daily. Yeah, leave it daily. In uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. The Bible says, but my God, my God, but my God, he personalizes it. This is not our God. Hallelujah. Amen. This is not the God of Pentecost now. This is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob now. But the Bible says, though they are not their God, they shall walk, be strong and do it. You will get there in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So Paul said, but my God, my God. And when he believes his God, hallelujah, when he gets to, I want you to attend him to me, oh. When he get to some church, because it's a pioneer, it's an overseer, a pioneer, a lot of churches, and put pastor there to pastor. When he get to a city or a town that they, he knew that the people did not know or are not taught or they didn't know how to be, this guy will go and begin to do labor, labor job, doing carpentry job, building houses and building tenting for him to have money to, so that he can have money to buy his clothes and field himself and feel his, uh, his, uh, his uh, rhetoric and stuff like that, so that he will have no need of relying or disrespect himself before the people that he is been teaching. So when you say, my God shall provide and supply all my needs, does not mean that you should be visibly or lazy around. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So you need to be proactive, you need to be active, you need to be hardworking, that are those are the necessity for you as children of God to do. But I want to tell you that we have a God. If you know that God personally, that you know that me, I don't want to borrow, I don't want people to be calling me and begin to harass me because I hold them money because I borrow and I don't have ability to pay back. So when you memorize this Philippians 4 19, but my God shall supply. All your need according to his riches in Christ by Christ glory. So now you personally, my God shall supply all my needs. All my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So when you go into that your work, you say, Lord, thank you for providing this work for me. So if you are sweeping, you will sweep it with all simplicity, with all joy, so that your boss that hire you. All the people that give you business, we know that this one is serious in his business. Show me a man that is what? Serious in his business. He will sit what? Before kings and not me man. Because the gift of a man will work, we make room for him. You begin to have friends. They say this one is very good in what he's doing. That is why they call you. They begin to tell you, oh, give him the job. Give him the job. Give him the job. And this one are name. Those people that know what they are doing. They are expensive. Hello? Hi. I am expensive because I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not cheap. Yeah, yeah. And that is the truth. I'm not cheap. Hallelujah. Amen. Because before I <laughs> before I knock your door, you, you must know, but you, are, you pay for professional. You know, my word <laughs> carry weight. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm going to advise you, Kale, I don't need your money. I don't need to steal your money. I don't need to lie to you. I go there and do whatever I need in low time. And I get my money and I go. Some people think that it's a magic, it's not magic. It's because it is what you know. And who gives you that wisdom? God. Correct. Who gives you that uh, skill? God. Who gave you that customer? God. My God. Where other people are struggling to have customer. You are saying, this is my fee. If you can't do it, then... You can find somebody else before another person call you who can pay your bill because you are good. Because God has given you skill. Like basically and then you have the Lord Almighty endowed them with wisdom and skill to be able to do all kind of workmanship. They were skillful. Because this is what God does. He gives men talent. He gives men gift. My God's are supplied now. Hallelujah. Amen. I came to this country with $10. Ten, I mean, how much money? $10. $10. $1,000. It was my mother that actually gave them 
in the airport to go and uh, change it. One one room get to know my other brother come with the ten dollar and I put that ten dollar in the in my pocket. I keep that ten dollar for many, many days when I came to America here before I spend it. I don't even know what I used it to buy. Somebody said hallelujah. hallelujah. But here yeah, the boy that came with ten dollar. Hallelujah. Amen. Almost 20 years ago, God has blessed him. Amen. Somebody said hallelujah. hallelujah. It is God that supplies all my need. So if you know that God, he will be able to supply all your need and you can stand on your feet and boast about God. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, 26. Matthew chapter 6, 26. The Bible says, Behold, the fowls of the air, for the soul now. What did they do? Aha! Neither do they reap, nor gather into bounds, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Now, that's a question that God said. That Jesus Christ said, He said, the birds of the air, they did not sow. They don't have a farm, but they eat it. It is God that is providing for them. And one of the things that the birds do is that the birds build houses. While a man can be struggling to have their own house, birds build houses. They build houses that have a double decker. Hallelujah. Amen. And then they house themselves there. It is so funny. It is so funny. Because it is God. So if you are struggling with your finances, I want you to read that word and find out that your struggling will not do, will not suffice. Your struggling going against the word of God is not going to help you. But for you to be able to know your right as a child of God and what God can do for you. So if you believe that word, that yes, if the Lord can fill the bells, in fact, this is what changed my life, my mentality, right from Nigeria. This, this Matthew chapter 6 was the one that changed my mentality totally. That made me to think that yes, it is God that has everything, that owns everything, that can do everything. And that God has been working for me, has never failed me from that moment. Somebody said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, the Bible says, and God is able to make all grace toward you. How many grace? All the grace. Bible says all grace. So you need grace to be financially free. That is there. You need grace to be abundantly rich. Is there. Whatever you desire from God, that grace is there for you. Somebody said hallelujah. You need a grace to have a good job. That grace is there. You need grace. You want to buy a house or build your own house, that grace is there. You need connection, that grace is there. All grace abound towards you. That ye always have war, all sufficiency in all things. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you have sufficiency in nothing, will you have any need for you to borrow? No. That is the question. So, if God has provided everything for you, there are my brother and my sister, there is no need for you to borrow. You will swim in the ocean of abundance. So, may abound to everyone good work. What did I say? That is what the Bible says. Good works, not bad work. So, rebellion to the word of God is a bad work. Not knowing the word of God is a bad work. Not studying the word of God to the extent that you will practice it is a bad work. And you have to do that work, meaning that applying it to your life. That is the greatest work that's going to help you. And that is where a lot of people struggle. From today, the Lord will free you. Amen. No more struggle. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, also, this scripture also should help you so that you can enjoy the peace that God desire for you. God desire for you peace to have on this earth. God do not want you trouble. He does. We want you to live a trouble-free life. What did I say? God wants you to live a trouble-free life. It is the devil that brings trouble, that brings torment. And suddenly it's come from your heart to so tell you to discredit the word of God. Now, hello. If you are here, you can bear with me. Those people that marry, when some people marry, before you and your partner understand the the mystery about the word of God, it will take months, perhaps years. There are some wives, they are rigid in giving. There are some husbands, they are rigid in giving. But the truth of the matter, 
If two are joined together, the problem still persists. If one is not willing to submit to the word of God, the problem persists until both of you understand, understood the mind of God. Now, you know, you know God is uh, the one that I've learned that I'm seeking. One way or the other, the grace of God is universal, can be applied to you. Hallelujah. Amen. But for you to swim in the realm of the supernatural to help you and help your finances, both of you to need to understand it. That is why. Hello. Uh -huh. That is why it is good for you, especially you young one. Marry somebody that know the scripture, it will help you. What did I just say? Marry someone that knows the scripture. Now know the scripture, it will help you. And practice it. Practice it. Because to read it enough is not good, but to actually practice it, especially when it comes to knowing your right in the scripture and doing it. So instead of worrying and anxiety that death will create in your life, because death creates that, memorize the scripture to help your soul to be at rest. Jeremiah chapter 17, 7 to 8. Jeremiah 17, 17, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walks in the Lord. Hallelujah. And whose hope the Lord is. For is our what? Be as a tree planted. I don't hear you very well. Because the Lord already professed blessing to that man, to that woman, to that person that trusted in the Lord. In other words, he trusted in the law, in his work, for him to do what God wants him to do. The Bible says that persons have been like a tree planted by the water. And what does that the tree do? And that work spread it out a root by the river, and shall not see when it cometh, but a leaf shall be green. Leaf green means that the Lord will give you the abundance grace to be able to bear fruit. And that fruit is not by your own power. That fruit is the ability that don't give the tree to be able to bear because the leaf is green. The leaf is green. But apply to those people that trusted in the Lord. You'll be able to apply the word of God to your finances and to a situation in your life and that is going to make the Lord Almighty to beautify and make and water your ground. And, and the Bible says, But a leaf shall be what? Green. And shall not what? Be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall he see from the end. When other people are crying, they don't have. When other people are saying, it is difficult. I'm telling you, you, you will be living what? In abundance, if you can apply the word of God. Yeah! That is true. I'm telling you. And if God make you to be fruitful and be green and be a hidden fruit, why would you need to go and borrow? There is no reason for you to go and borrow. Because, now, I told you, hallelujah. Amen. I buy a lot of houses. Hallelujah. Amen. In this country, and when I just come, you know, when I was uh, borrowing money to buy houses, and I told you the first time I want to buy houses and I pay cash in this country, they only give me one paper to sign. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, the way they gave me that, I was expecting a lot of paper. Uh, <laughs> as usual, I was expecting, you know, it was so surprising to me. And, the, and I saw the way they were treating me that day, Hallelujah, because I went with my me mechanic uh, clothes and <laughs> I just went there. But the way they said, this Mr. Ojo, yeah, you know, so the wife, they begin to say, sir, sir, it is not you, it is your, <laughs> it is your car. Any tea, any water, any drink. <laughs> and then they brought the, the paper, work, one, one sheet of paper. And I told my wife, when I can, I said, ah. I couldn't. So all those things you are signed, hallelujah. You will get there in Jesus' name. So all those things you are signed for mortgages and mortgages and mortgages. So from that time I said, oh, okay, so from now on, I will buy my property work in cash. In cash. <laughs> hey, 
I pray the Almighty God will bless you with this. Amen. Amen. Now, what 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 happened? What happened is that when now there is another thing I want to tell you. If you buy your property in cash, hallelujah, Amen. and later on you want to refinance little money, hallelujah, so that you can get and um, you know use it for something else, hallelujah. Amen. The way the bank will look at your paperwork is totally different than when you want to actually buy and borrow. The process is easy, the interest is much cheaper, and you will have your way because they want to do business with you. Number is that hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, anyway, we get there. I'm not Amen. teaching in, in that uh in, in that I'm just telling you that the principle for you to know that if you trust and believe the word of God and live it, the Lord can make everything abound for you. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. The Bible says, The blessing of the Lord it make it rich and add no, no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord. Make it rich and add no sorrow with it. Where other people are struggling and struggling and struggling. If you believe the word of God and you apply it, when you know it and you apply it to your life, that word will come to pass. How do you apply it? Do what the Bible has you to do. And you see God. Now, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I've seen a lot of people. They save and save and save and save and look for stock to buy. Now, what does happen in America now? Already tell you that saving and saving alone will not get you anywhere. Except the Lord build the house, they never invade the bill. Look at how many billions people have lost. Look at how many millions people have lost. Look at how many thousands people have lost because they invested in stock and in bond. And it, the economy you know, outside. And the nations, they were, they were in trouble. And countries were borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. Hallelujah! Amen. Because of coronavirus. Huh? Huh? Economy went down. And people were in trouble. But I know somebody that can bless you and make you rich without no sorrow is the one that can teach you how to be rich. Without no stealing, without no lying, without no trouble. He know what to tell you. And the funny thing is that that secret belongs to you that apply his word unto him. Somebody said hallelujah. hallelujah. Psalm 115, fast forward, what does he say? The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. So the blessing is not only for you. Now, when God begins to increase you more and more, you and your children, you have that means that the blessing now go to your children. Now, Abraham was blessed, the blessing was transferred to what? Isaac. Isaac was blessed, the blessing was transferred to what? Jacob. Jacob was blessed, the blessing was transferred to all his what? All his children. And he was able to tell his children their fortune, their future, based on the acts they apply to the word of God. For the firstborn, he said, you are my firstborn. You are my excellence of power, dignity. But you, our, he said, he said, you only a new you know, unstable, unstable as water. You will not the first one. The first one. The first one. That's supposed to get all the blessing. Somebody said, Hallelujah. Ah, but when you get to Joseph, then Joseph! He said, The hacker has war and surely grief him, but his bow are bold, strong, like the, like the God of, 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 of Almighty God of Jacob. Hallelujah. Amen. So, he, so, he said, he said, he said, Akka has surely grieved him, but his bold are bold. In other words, the strength of God was with him. He was able to stand. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, let me read that for you. Uh, Genesis chapter 49. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Five what? Genesis of the. Five. No, no, no. I don't want to read. Found it or just said. 
uh, 20, 22. No, not 20, 22. Yeah, Joseph is a what? Fruitful boy. Even as a fruitful boy by a way. Whose branch is run over the wall? That is a blessing. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, 23 is where I'm going. The Akka of war slowly grieved him and shot at him and ate him. Because people ate you. Before, because they talk back at you and uh, gossip you and say all kind of stuff at your back does not limit. The word, the blessing of God, if you are a somebody that love the word of God and apply it to your life. Somebody said hallelujah. hallelujah. Because people hated you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Does not mean that the blessing of God will not come into your life. If you leave the world. And here is the man, here is Joseph, in the midst of trouble. And you can see, let's examine the life of Joseph. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And see how God was able to bless him. You know, here he was a young boy that, that there was no father, there was no mother, there was no brother, there was no pastor, there was no daddy that was supposed to look at him. There is no pastor there, no guy, only him, in the midst of ungodly people. But because he knew the word of God, he was able to act on the word of God and God blessed him. Don't the Bible say, every, the Lord was with Joseph. Now, you are in America. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you get to America, you begin to behave like an America. You begin to smoke, begin to drink, begin to go to class. You want not to borrow? Mm -hmm. you, you want to have a successful, a debt-free life? You are handing your check and going to a party and, and drink yourself out and uh, womanizing and, uh, and then you want to invest, you want to buy a house for cash, you want to go and steal. Hallelujah. It doesn't work that way. Hallelujah. It doesn't work that way. Now, I found, I wonder, praise the Lord, Hallelujah. I wonder how people is going to work for eight hours. One day, one day for eight hours. And then hand the money on Friday and just spend it. Anyhow, there that, that might be something that is wrong with your, with your something. Somebody said hallelujah. So, they hated him for no reason, but his bow above his strength and hand of his arm were made strong by the hand of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel, even by the God of the Father, who shall well help thee. And and the Almighty, who shall well bless thee with the blessing of the heaven above, the blessing of the thee that lie under, blessings of the breast and of the womb, and so on and so forth. Somebody said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And also, he blessed the rest of his children based according to what their attitude and their belief in the word of God is. So, it's the one that increases you. It will, the law will increase you, you and your children, more and more. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse, what does it say? Amen. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed thou shalt be when thou goest out. That blessing shall already be there, if you believe the word of God. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy 28, I'm going to read 11 to 13. The Bible says, and the Lord shall make the thee plenteous, he will in the fruit of the body. In the fruit of the cattle, Amen. and in the fruit of the ground, Amen. in the land which thou, if the Lord swear unto the Father to give thee. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, Amen. the heaven to give thee rain Amen. unto the land in the season. Amen. In the season. And to bless all the work of the hand, Amen. and thou shalt. Learn unto many nations, Amen. and thou shalt not borrow. Amen. And the Lord shall make thee the earth, Amen. and not the tree, and thou shalt be above only. Amen. Like that, only. And thou shalt walk, shall not be beneath, if thou shalt hearken unto the commandment of the Lord that God which uh, commanded this day to observe. To observe. What did I say? To observe. And to do them. So in doing it, that is where the work is. In doing it. Now, I don't want you to be misled. And I don't want you to have this mind that, okay, we can disobey the word of God to enrich ourselves. It's not going to work. 
And the moment we get that, the sooner we get that, the better for you. So communicate to the brethren and your siblings and the brothers and your spouse that the moment they started obeying the word of God, that is when the word of God begins to happen to them. But there are blessings that are universal. Hallelujah. Amen. The rain, the sun, the food you will eat, the clothes you will wear, the house you will live, is universal. Hallelujah. Amen. Either you walk or you don't walk. You will eat. You will eat. Hallelujah. Amen. Rain will fall. But you may live on credit, meaning that you can live. People will begin to will begin to borrow and borrow if you wish to do what other people are doing that is not be told from. So this also this scripture should help you to understand your own duty. This is your duty now to know your duty as God's children that want to enjoy the Abrahamic blessing and Jesus Christ grace and blessing toward you as born again Christian. Memorize this scripture to help you obey God's commandment and practice it. From today onward, I've not been doing that before. Begin to do it. Number one, Luke chapter six thirty-eight. Luke chapter six thirty-eight. What does the Bible say? Give and it shall be given. Everybody, can think about that. Give and it shall be given. Okay. Read it one more time. Give and what? Hallelujah. Now look at me and, and say it. What? Give and it shall be given. Who said that? The word of God. The word of God said that give and it shall be given. Now you want to have, but you are stingy. You can't give. Hallelujah. There are, there are people that are coming to church. Too. Hallelujah. Maybe they end. I'm just, I'm just being frank. Hallelujah. They are coming to church. They during the course of the week they hand three hundred dollar. Hallelujah. Okay. And they are coming to the church. They say they are going again. Oh, I'm going higher. Yes, I am. Ah. Tomorrow, if the spirit of God did not, in, in, you know, minister the word of God to you, you will not be able to change. Because poverty is a mental thing. Hello, I, don't, hey, hey. I will not be able to finish. I will continue next week. Poverty is what is a mental thing. That is why you see a lot of Christians are poor. You may be born again. You can get to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. I won't say you can't get to heaven because giving is not the requirement for you to get to heaven. Giving your life is the requirement for you to work to get to heaven. But the devil may hinder you from being blessed here on earth. The funny thing is, if you are being poor here on earth, there is a tendency for you to compromise. That is where the problem is. Hello? Hi. So there are people that have Poverty mentality. They can give. And the Bible says, give and it shall be given. So if you don't give, nothing will be given to you. Hello? Hi. As funny as it is, if you so soon to the life of men, people will so soon back to you. Hallelujah. Amen. If you sow house, if you allow people to send your house, guess what God is going to give to you? Houses. I'm just telling you. So those people that know how to give, they are the wisest person. So from today, get it in your mind. If you give people food, you shall never lack food. God will give to you your own food. When Anna gave Samuel, does she have another kid? Yes. She has. She has boys and she has girls. That is God for you. 
nobody has to give God. So begin to have this from your mind. From today that I want to be a giver. I give I'm giving to you. Good. Whatever I want to give to you. Hello? It's different than what you have given me. Now God will now give you a good measure. And when you want to give also, you will satisfy your conscience that you have given you a good measure. Try from your mind. When you want to give your offering, give your best. When you want to give your tithe, be faithful to it. Good measure. Don't suppress from it at all. Good measure. That satisfy your conscience that you have been faithful to what God has That is what God, so that God can give unto you good measure. What? Praise, Praise God. God. And shaking together and what? Running over. And this is where the secret is. Shall we? Men. Shall we? Men. I don't hear you. Men. Men. So God will now send other men. Hello? I will open. Are you understanding the, the mystery I'm talking about? There are men here. That God is going to use for you to be blessed. It's going to what now bring men to your life that is going to bring it to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Shamay give to your bosom for what? For with the same measure that you meet with that, it shall what be measure into you. For go back to alone. You that so sparingly shall work, receive sparingly. You that so bountifully shall work, receive bountifully. The Lord that open your eyes in Jesus' name. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 9. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. What did the Bible say? Honor the Lord in thy substance, uh -huh. and the first fruit of thy increase. So shall thy bound be filled with plenty, and our precious shall God with me wine. Man, hallelujah. Amen. There are some people, when they get this one, they want Yaku in the Bible, they pray, No! Uh -uh. My first food, that means my first uh, week uh, salary, or my first month, or whatever. Ah! This one is what? It's too big, oh, I do it. How will I get my first? Ha! I pray to your mighty God, we open our understanding. Yeah. This is the one. You can't remove that one from the Bible. It's there. The funny thing is that you don't have. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You, it's the world. And if you want to be financially for you, you know, before, I've not, I told you, Hallelujah, I'm playing. I've not practiced this long time until I read it. I read it. And I said, yes, we have to practice this thing. If it doesn't work, hallelujah, we're going to, you know, uh, you know, but it worked. It was a sister, yes, hallelujah, Amen. that first gave, that gave testimony. And everybody began to give testimony. There are people that have completed their house, people get their green card, you know. When I introduce it, the devil make, it make, it make, immediately I announce it. My tenant are always late. <laughs> My tenant are also late. He told me that he's going to give me four months. <laughs> and he's going to bring in <laughs> the, uh, the, first, uh, the first week. So no excuse. I will say, oh, it is decided you're the enemy. So I said, don't worry. If you bring even one year, I'm going to drop it as one of And of course, he brought it four months. It was a surprise to me. He came and gave me four months in advance. On January, first week, I gave him my check that I gave from company. I gave it, and I gave him up. Oh. But that year, that was the first year I started buying my houses car. Ever since, I started buying my houses in cash. Yeah. Real. Real. I have never experienced that in my life. But it's true. It's true. So I said, hey. Until I die. <laughs> Somebody said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will keep me giving my first fruit. Yeah, yeah look, I'm in the past, I'm the overseer. Somebody said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I still give it. I still give it. And what I'm telling you, if I don't do something, I don't have sin to do it, it's because I know it works. And nobody can have gift God. Now let's read this one, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. The Bible says, 
For thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that will give thee power to get wealth. Wealth. Remember that. Mm. Remember that. It is said that give part together. That he will he may establish his covenant with Yahshua unto the Father as into this day. Remember that. When it gets to the giving, it is when people don't want to become Abraham blessing day is there. But when you remove the first row, the titan. They want Abraham blessing, Sama. Pastor Randall, why are Randall? Abraham, I am blessed. Who am I called? Who am I lagoon? Oh my God. Who are you? God is not there. But the Bible says you shall remember the Lord that God. For it's the one that gives you power to make way. So if you know that the one that gives you power, hallelujah, they have a loaf. Uh, they have a uh, loaf of bread in his hand and he gives you one slice. And he said, that's like, can you give me a little bit and then you are running away? Mm. You see how the whole loaf, he can give you the whole loaf and get another more loaf and give unto you and make another loaf and give unto you. Now let me tell you, men also like people that give them something. Mm. Isn't it? Yes. Yes. So like a number one, you they say that man is nice. Why, do, why does the man nice? Why does the woman nice? There are a lot of people that didn't want to so, say so yes to that man. But when they look at the attitude of his giving and sacrifice, they say, ah ah, ma pa mi, ma fe bo pa mi I will marry you. Ah ah, me ra wo kumi ati ma kwa. Somebody that are the lawyer. You know, somebody you want to fake me ya wo, o bere ti ni ya wo. You are say ah, person ma bitu le mpe se le break le mpe wo ayi orere ba ti ma kwa. O bere ti ni, o bere ti ni ha wo. Hallelujah. Ah ro kuma bi ajen. Eh eh, ah ro kuma bi ajen to ba. To ah ro kuma bi ajen to ba de le mi. You have to be generous. <laughs> Are you guys hearing me, boys? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Ah, we have uh, our boys there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, you know, Hallelujah. Amen. They, you have to be generous. You have to be generous. Because if you don't like it, too generous. Amen. So, now, apply it. When you are now generous to the things of God, how will God feel? How will he feel? Oh, you are generous. Now, look. Solomon offered a sacrifice that anyone has not offered. God said, I'm giving you a blank check. Write whatever you want from it. My brother, my sister, there is no short cut. When you want to be rich, you need to know and learn how to give. And give, and give, and give, so that the blessing that God promised in his word and come into your life. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to continue next week. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because of our time. Hallelujah. Amen. So, number six, allow God to take control of your finances. Amen. Number seven is don't Borrow with high interest rates, and you should work. Avoid borrowing your brother for work for usury. We shall go on that next week, and I pray that the Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know. Maybe you have question. You say I can say you know, you know, there five times, or you want to share or contribute to this teaching before we call it a day today. Somebody shout hallelujah. The very, very interesting teaching that body or question is supposed to be in our heart. Anyone? Somebody shout yes, sir. Hello. hallelujah. I just want to contribute. Uh, yeah, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. There was a, uh, I have this, uh, I, I pay my tithe. Yes, sir. But until, you know, sometimes it's a word, and that's why sometimes God will send a word. You might be in the church for a long time, you don't grasp it, or your word has not come. But that was a, uh, the time that uh, uh, brother, uh, pastor from London, okay. that that's he, what you the, the wife, okay. you know, I paid my time because I don't look at my pastor. Hmm. 
I don't I don't look pay stuff because it's a direct deposit. Mm. So I pay my tithe based on my direct deposit. Mm. I've never, you know, and sometimes I just pay extra sometimes, mm -hmm. but I always pay based on my so for the day that yeah. she was uh -huh. Ministerly, I think she wanted to take offering, uh -huh. and she just said something about, do you know that you're supposed to pay everything that yeah, the gross, your gross, your gross. What's next? Hey, mm -hmm. it's like I never had it before, <laughs> and you know, but I just I said, see the gross. Mm -hmm. Then I, that day, I made determination. Mm -hmm. I think it was a December program, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And I vowed before God that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start looking at my pay store hmm. and be paying gross. Wow. So, I, you know, all these years, I only pay my deposit because I, I don't get pay store. Mm -hmm. so, so, and then I say, huh, so this is the way they go. Mm -hmm. So, it's, and it's a mentality. So, I never thought that that money is too much. Mm. You understand? But I just decided that God, I'm going to be faithful mm. in paying my gross. So, I think it, this is a good lesson yeah. and it, it's good for the church and it's going to help us a long way because when when you cannot pay tight in a little, mm -hmm. there's no way you can, when God bless you with big, you can never do it. Mm. So it's a, it's a, like you said, it's a mentality, so we have to uh, appreciate this kind of uh, teaching because it's going to go along, it's going to help us, mm -hmm. you know, and help as many that are not faithful. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the truth of the yeah, uh, uh, Vicky, Toby, you are the one. This is another one. I credit to your, to your, you know, to to buttress your point. Yes. Credit to you when we were raising raising fund, yeah, and you gave uh, ten thousand dollar. Hallelujah. Amen. And the the the, the I believe that month, the Almighty do a double. Uh, uh, miracle for you that you testify. Yes. Now, that is God for you. But also, I want to correct this. So listen to me and listen to me very well online. That I don't want you to have this mentality that if I'm giving to God, God must go give me back mentality. No. God knows how to pay you back the way He wants you to fit the purpose of God for your life. So have that mentality. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because giving to God is not trained by butter. It's obeying the word of God. Obey the word of God. So if you must obey the word of God, like you said, you have to obey it fully. Truthfully, so God will not say, my son, because you are paying gross, because a lot of people still pay gross. A lot of people don't even feel faithful in that gross. Somebody <laughs> not yeah, Sorry, sorry. A lot of people don't, you are paying net before, before you started paying gross. A lot of people is not even faithful to their net, not to talk of war, of gross. So people that didn't know this, God will not say, they are what? God, oh, yeah, it's their sinner. No, 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 no. God doesn't operate that, that. So you wouldn't have, I don't want you to have gift concerns or anyone that is hearing for the first time to have a gift concerns that are not faithful. But hence you hear it like that, sister, like that uh, pastor I was saying, and then you grab it and you make confidence and God has been faithful. God has been really faithful. And uh, my experience uh, with people that are faithful, God always faithful with them. Always. And I wonder why people that didn't do it, they always complain and struggle and complain and struggle and that has been my experience as a pastor and I experience it every day. People that are not faithful and they are giving and still worship, they always have difficulties and I don't know why. Why people that are faithful they are to their still worship are always on the mountain top doing things financially that the other people will not do. But it seems that I don't know as man what to do. Now for me to just pray that the Almighty God will open their world, they are understanding. And I pray that the Almighty God will open as many as listen to me, understanding, to be able to know the word of God and do the word of God. 
not for rebellion, but to do it truthfully and genuinely, and the Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. Hey, God bless you because of our time. I'm going to stop today. Next week, write your, write your question. What did I just say? Write your question. Because I'm going to attend to question. I'm going to attend to question. Each one must have a question. For question, possibly you have seven days now to prepare for your own question. Whatever thing, it may not be you, it may be you, it doesn't really matter. Just have this question, and when we are, you know, when we are dealing with it, you will see that it will help other people. That is what we want. We want people to be really blessed. Can you do that? Yes. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand up and commit our life unto the hand of God. We have studied about death, that the Almighty God will give us the ability, if there is any death in our life, to offset them, to pay them off. And that the Lord give us the grace to live a debt free life. So that we will be a lender and not a borrower. Let us pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. And in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Let us pray for all our children that the Almighty God will give them wisdom, knowledge, understanding to understand the word of God, that they will live according to the word, word of God, that whatever pollution that is in the outside of the world will not have any effect in their life, as we their parents are faithful, that they too will receive the grace to be faithful. Let us pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Lord God Almighty, you are the one that empowered us. You empower Sandra, Mr. Rabbi, you empower uh, uh, Joseph. You empower all that children in the name of God to you and obey your word on the day of the day. That the world will not answer them wrongly. It's the name of Jesus. And in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Now I want you to intercede and say, in the name of the Lord Jesus, the the Lord 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 Jesus every power from the pit of air that stands that stand in, stand stand in my life, not to be financially buoyant, not to be financially strong, only go by your consume pray in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every power that stands on my way, in the name of Jesus, that will not allow me to stand, that will not allow me to be surrounded by buoyant, and cast them out by the power. Pray and tell him to the Lord. Pray and tell him to the Lord. So for you, so for Christi, that I will give it to you. Every power of the king of men that will not allow me to be united with them. Cast them out. In the name of Jesus, we call Holy Ghost. Yes. So for now, in the name of Christ, them out. Masantaka laiyima. In the name of Jesus. Ali G. Just name we are praying. Amen. Somebody say, I remove the spirit of death. I remove the spirit of death. In my life, in my finances, in my family, in my shop, in my home. We are praying in the name of Jesus. Remove them. In the name of Jesus. Help the spirit of death. I remove you. In the name of Jesus. Santa de la Deliva. In the name of Jesus. Santa de la Deliva. Santa de la Deliva. In the name of Jesus. I remove the spirit of death. In the name of Jesus, in my life and my finances, in my home, in my church, in my family, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God of my let us be blessed. In the name of Jesus, let us be blessed. And in Jesus' name, we are praying. Somebody say every ignorance, every ignorance, and doubt spirit, and rebellious spirit against the word of God in my life, in my family, over my spouse and my children. Your time is all. Die by fire. Open your mouth. In the name of Jesus. Rebellion and doubt spirits. 
are not in the spirit. Every spirit that thou word of God, every spirit that is in the word of God, to be faithful and to be obedient, even as still worship, to so, control so the word of God, that spirit, let them die by fire, consume them by fire, in the name of Jesus. And in Jesus' name we are praying. Somebody said, Deliver me, and my loved one, from every terror, from every terror, and spiritual wickedness, and spiritual in high places, and affecting my finances. Open your mouth in the name of Jesus. Tell it to the Lord. Every wicked spirit and every places in that place that is affecting my finances, that affects my life. Oh Lord, Lord God Almighty, consume them by fire. And in Jesus' name we are praying. Father, we thank you for the miracle that you are giving to us, for knowing and open our understanding for your word today. Father, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. Amen. As you are going to go with us, Amen. remove hindrance on our way. Amen. Remove doubt and rebellious spirit. Amen. Remove lack and failure. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Is there anyone here that have not understood what we have said concerning the word of God and all these principles that we have talked about? We declare that the power in the name of the Lord Jesus, every spirit of rebellion and doubt shall be scattered in Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we are going, we are going free. Amen. As we are going, we are going home safe. Amen. As we are going, we are going with an answer and renew. And we cannot then renew. Amen. Thank you for answering prayer. Amen. Let your job continue to work strong and stronger in you. Amen. Thank you for answering prayer. Amen. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Shall we share our anchor? For thou know the righteous in the favor without compassing us with a shield. Praise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sin of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Amen.